Hello from the Arctic Circle. What do you mean, why am I wearing a t-shirt? Well, maybe I found the only patch of snow inside the Arctic Circle that I've experienced so far. I'm Patrick Hughes and this is Planet Patrick. Good morning. I saw a moose, or was it an elk? I don't know. It was giant. It was standing kind of straight on to me, and I thought, this looks like a giant human. Am I starting to hallucinate? Uh, but it was actually an elk. So I'm staying in a free site that was recommended to me, which is basically a giant car park in the middle of the countryside. And uh, it was very quiet, and it was free. I'm becoming quite the wild camper. There were a few vans here. There's still a few up there. I'm making some coffee and I'm getting on the road. I'm now at the very top of Norway and I've got a lot of driving to do. So I want to get kind of four or five hours under my tail today. I need to wash Barbara. If you haven't seen me do this before, I try and use a little camping gas cooking stove when I'm wild camping so I don't use up the main gas because then that powers the fridge. And it means I can have fresh food, which is good. Okay, I'm gonna make coffee. See you on the road. I have a feeling I'm gonna be stopping a lot in Norway. This is a fantastic view of a fjord. I'm about five kilometers outside the town of Fauske in northwestern Norway and heading towards the Arctic Circle Center, which is about an hour's drive further along. But I just had to stop. I've been driving along this fjord. Isn't it gorgeous? The only sound is the buzzing of the bees enjoying these little summer flowers. I might have thought that Northern Norway wouldn't have many people in it. And then you stop somewhere like this and there's hundreds of camper vans. Today's fun stop is the Arctic Circle Center. Let's head in. You can buy a dead reindeer or send your post. In the spirit of being in the Arctic Circle, I've ordered a reindeer burger. It comes with a mushroom stew and that sounds interesting. So let's see what it looks like. <laughs> By the way, the Arctic Circle actually runs through the center of this building. I think there's a way you can determine exactly where it is when you go back out into the shop area and outside. We'll have a look at that after lunch. Okay, we're going in, but we're here for this star. A lot of bread, small burger. It's good. It does taste strongly of reindeer, which I like. Sorry, Santa. I probably did expect some kind of interpretive center. Instead, there was the cafe, interesting reindeer burger, but also a massive shop, but no interpretation. Just simply, this is the Arctic Circle. Come and buy something, plastic, with Arctic Circle written on it. Or in Norwegian, Polar Circulin. That is it. That's the marker that denotes exactly where the Arctic Circle runs. In which direction it runs, I'm not quite so sure because it doesn't say specifically where it runs, but I'm taking it that it runs right through the gift shop. That would make the most sense if you were trying to sell furry Norwegian trolls. Speaking of trolls, let's get back on the road. This 
kind of scene is not too unusual either in Sweden or here in Norway because these are single carriageway roads and when something like a road works or other blockage is slowing things down you could sit here for 5, 10, 15 minutes. I've had to sit for longer. This is also the first toll that I've seen. Tolls in, not trolls, this is Norway. Tolls are automatic here. You need to be signed up with a thing called AutoPass. Automatically charges you. The problem is not so much the cost of an individual one, but the fact of their frequency. This one's 45 kroners, which is about four euros 50. And that's the first one. There are lots of them. So I was going to do a bit of a walking tour in a town called Mosianes and the rain is torrential. I'm going to carry on to my next stop and hope that the rain dies down. Hello from inside this random 10 kilometer long tunnel in Norway. But I got a text from my friend and if I keep driving about another three hours, we can stay at the same motorhome campsite for the next couple of days. stopped <laughs> just about 10 minutes from my campsite because I think some sheep have escaped and there's guys running all over the place trying to capture them and scoop them back up to safety. Here I am at this great big repair centre for motorhomes. Three or four things have gone wrong with Barbara Bailey. Minor tweaks and maintenance issues. And I managed to find a place in this little town on the way to Olesund. Well, this is Kroken. I've met a couple of the team in here and they're adorable. It's already after half past three, which is when they close and they're helping me out. Here's the things that I need to have fixed. So it's this bit that I think that they're going to be able to fix for me. Remember the clasp on this broke off. Well, he's actually taken the whole piece off and he's trying to take a bit off another arm, which is the wrong size, but I have to pay for the whole piece. Get the clasps working again. I have a turning light that was broken, but they can't fix that because they don't have the right size. And my grey water waste pipe valve. Somebody nicked it and uh, so I'm stuffed without that and they can't fix that. I'll be happy if they can get this part fixed because this has been a real problem. This turning light is broken. I scraped it against a bollard. That one's my fault. There should be a valve on the end of this grey water pipe and somebody has either nicked it or it's broken off somewhere along the way and I don't know where and it happened in the last couple of days. Without that being fixed, grey water is just running straight out and I don't think anybody in any campsite would stand for that. Who wants my noodly water running down their embankment? The person who helped me was called Thomas and uh, we have new clasps, yay! And they open and close. It took a bit of effort and they charge by the amount of time that it took, including for them looking at the things that they couldn't fix. And so it cost 150 euros to replace two tiny clasps. Welcome to Norway. I'd rather have this window fixed than not. So hopefully it stays fixed. Morning. I'd hoped the weather had calmed down overnight but it really, really didn't. It's been blowing a gale since I went to sleep. I was hoping to tour Allison today. Who said that life on the road was always sunshine and roses? It's absolutely pouring down here in Allesund in Norway. Here was my plan. To get in yesterday, park up, rest. It took about five and a half hours to get here. Take a walk into the old town, do a spot of filming, have a nice cup of coffee, relax, and then move on to the next spot. The next spot is up a mountain, looking down over a fjord. Really beautiful, the photographs look amazing online. And I thought, well, before I leave Norway, that might be a fun place to go. The reality is, there's been torrential rain for nearly 24 hours straight. So things don't always work out. The other thing is, I have to get back sooner than I thought to get a new MOT certificate on the camper van. It gives me three more weeks on the road, boohoo for me, but I thought that I had six to nine weeks on the road. I got a lot of working out to do over the next while. Well, 
I've moved Barbara Bailey a little bit closer to the city centre but sadly it hasn't improved the weather any but I have my tiny umbrella and a hat that's the best that we can do let's go and have a look at all this and it's P Hoos or Mr P Hughes just about what do you think they sell in Johnny kiosk It's pretty damp out here. <laughs> I met a group of passengers for Viking cruises all with their giant red umbrellas. And they came and huddled underneath this little kind of awning. And they've gone back to their bus. It's simply too wet. I think this harbour area is one of the nicest places to see here in the old town. So I think the wise idea would be to go and find a nice hot cup of coffee. I had a delicious coffee and was looking out the door and my view out the window was towards this telephone box but I didn't realise it has a little free library in it. Isn't that a brilliant idea? Olesund is very clearly very well set up for having tourists. Some cute restaurants, really nice coffee shops, lots of tourist souvenir shops and of course down there the harbour and that looks a bit like a bandstand. The only problem is, like anywhere, when the weather's bad, it's harder to enjoy. Time for me to head back to Barbara Bailey, all coffeeed up, and start to make my way up a mountain. It's still absolutely tipping it down. Oh, I just got soaked taking a photograph. Time to get to the campsite. Morning. A little bit brighter today when I say that. The clouds are rolling in a little bit. Let's go and have a look at the white waters of Good Brands Uvit. Well, these are the tumbling white waters of Gudbrandsjuvet. This is high in the mountains of West Norway. This is one place in Norway which is really worth the visit. The more I travel around Norway, the more I see roofs like this, which are made up of moth and plants and evergreen. It's really beautiful. I love these little red huts. Thank you so much for joining me for this experience inside the Arctic Circle. 
If you haven't already, please subscribe. Until the next episode, take care. Bye-bye.